the doctor. How you doing? Very well, thank you. Uh, very pleased to be here. How is Comic Con going for you so far? Well, this is my very first Comic Con interview, so it's going. It's starting now. I have no idea. I got here last night. I went to bed. I sort of stuck my head out the window today, and it was quite cool. I saw a, I saw a woman as a TARDIS walking down the street. I was like, "Oi, nice TARDIS!" But it, it, like, kind of people recognise me less now. My hair's shorter. Yes, yes, it has been a big topic of conversation. The hair. Oh, really? Yes. But I love it. Let's talk about your tenure as the Doctor, which has been so remarkable. I mean, this is more of a global phenomenon than ever. Uh, certainly, it hits up right against the 50th anniversary. Do you? I know you're still in it, but do you kind of have a sense of what this experience has meant to you and what you've meant to the show? What, uh, yeah, I mean, what it's meant to me is it's 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 completely transformed my life and my family's life. Actually, it's been uh, the most wonderful experience. I've met some of the, you know, my closest friends, Karen and Jenna, Arthur, Stephen Moffat, Piers Wenger, Beth Willis. I mean, you know, Mark Gatiss, like so many people that I really care about and. Uh, in terms of what I've meant to the show, I don't know really. I'm just I'm 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 one of eleven cogs, and and um, and we, you know, I feel very privileged to have done it, and I feel very privileged. And and it's not over for me yet. I've still got the Christmas special to go. I know. Yeah, and apparently it's like twenty pages in. Stephen was telling me about it last night, so that sounds exciting. What was he telling you? No, <laughs> if I told you I'd have to kill you, and you don't want to die on the Thursday of Comic Con. That would be horrendous. That might be worth it. No, might know. be worth it. Know. You know, you mentioned the eleven. Let's talk about how your sort of approach to your doctor and the conversation. He's had such a huge arc in my mind. I mean, I feel like he started out so sort of playful and childlike in a way, and then he went to some very dark places. What were the conversations with um, Stephen Moffat like? Well, I mean, he's such a consummate writer that it's it, that he he takes you on these journeys and he gives you these these, these brilliant places to go with that character. Um, and I think, you know, the actor's responsibility is to be inventive in this part, and, and I hope I've been inventive, and, I, and it's very kind that you say that he's playful, because I hope I hope he has a bit of that, and I, there's a bit of magic and a bit of an old wizened man, and I don't know that it's 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 such a wonderful part that you can really you've got carte blanche to play with it in any way, and um, and Stephen is such you know such a funny writer um, and such a tragic writer that you know he, he makes that a very enjoyable experience. Yeah, I was watching, I was rewatching *A Nightmare in Silver* the other day, and that role is so Gollum-esque, or that that sort of episode is so Gollum-esque and so Shakespearean. I was just thinking how committed you have to be as an actor to play this well, role. You really know your who? It's you know, like <laughs> you know, she really knows what she's talking about here. Um, yeah, well, yeah, and you know, that was that was a very exciting part to. to uh, um, or, um, sorry, I mean. That was a very exciting aspect of him to explore because I've always been intrigued by the darker side of the Doctor. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the history of the man, there's so much blood on his hands, yeah. you know, so much. And at some point, and I think that's why he's funny and affable, because if he wasn't, he'd just go, oh, I can't do it. There's too much, there's too much pain and too much anguish and too much death and losing people. I think of all the companions that he's just have slipped and I think, you know, he's, he's, there's, there's a man in pain there somewhere. There really is. A, there's also, I mean, he's done so much saving as well. Yeah, yeah, true, very true. And, and, yeah, you know, you can't take that away from him. And that must give him a bit of a, a, bit of a spring in his step as well. So, yeah, it's, I, I've loved playing him. He's, he's, the, he's the most incredible character. Let's talk about the John Hurt, non-doctor, dark doctor. Speaking of the doc dark doctor, yeah. First of all, what was that experience like shooting the 50th with him? With Johnny, oh, wow. I mean, a lesson, an education, and a privilege. He, uh, he is an incredible actor, a brilliant man. He doesn't have to do anything. I'm there climbing the walls. Me and Dave would be, like, running around doing loads of stuff, and John just have to sort of flick his eyes, and he'll tell you everything, you know. So it was, it was fantastic. Do you know if his role, which may be like 8.5, we're hearing, Dr. 8.5, kind of will change the mythology of the show at all? Well, I, I, I couldn't possibly speculate <laughs> as to what it will do to the show. But what I can tell you is you're in for some serious revelations. What were the conversations with you and David Tennant like? I mean, your doctors kind of get along quite well, right? Yeah, I, I love David and I love his doctor. I mean... You know, we're, we're pals, and we had a great time making it. He's, again, a brilliant actor, great bloke. And um, I think we were just like, oh, my God, it's you. Oh, my God, it's you. And it was just sort of like, I don't know. It was, it was you'll, you'll have to wait and see. 
So you're supposed to shoot the Christmas special, which is the last time we'll see you. Yeah. Sniff. Mm-hmm. I know. Sniff for all of us. Well, that's after. Um, are you? Is that completion with Ryan Gosling's movie, or is that done? Yeah, I've shot that movie, and that was really exciting. And so I've got no hair. Um, I had a great time, and and Ryan's, you know, clever and brilliant, and sort of everything you'd want him to be. Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm really excited as to what that will be like because I I really believe in that film. Um, and then yeah, and then I go back in September and and shoot. The final hour. And you've seen some pages, it sounds like. Uh, well, no, I haven't read any. I've just heard about them from Stephen last night. What can you tell us about the character that you're playing in Ryan Gosling's movie? I play a guy called Bully, who is uh, just a complete lunatic, really. Uh, he, he's, he sort of has a magic about him. And I, I really, uh, I don't know, it was, it was a character I really fell in love with as soon as I read it. And it was a film I really fell in love with because it operates on a sort of level of film that I'm really intrigued with. It's, you're wearing Lynch earrings, I think. I, am. I think. I think you'll like How to Catch a Monster. It's of that world, you know. Sweet, that yeah. sounds amazing, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, are, cool. those, are those kind of the roles that you're looking for now, that, you, that you're making your exit? I don't know, really. I just sort of look to do quality work, and I read that script, and I've always been a big fan of, of Ryan's work, and uh, so that was hugely intriguing to me, but quite like to do a play in New York that would be fun or you know there's lots of people I'd love to work with you know there's lots of directors I'd love to work with and actors I'd love to work with so but I, you know I go back to auditioning and trying to get a job someone employ me employ this man <laughs> we want to see more of you. well we do have a couple of fan questions that okay. I want to ask you what is your central takeaway from your interactions with a devoted fandom my central takeaway central takeaway what's what's what is a central takeaway well, i the, guess the the thing you take away most yeah. oh wow enthusiasm and support and just the people that dress up and scream i don't know really i love doctor who fans i'm 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 sort of and i don't want to overrate the pudding on it but yeah i just they've been cool they've been good to me man so I'll always be, I'll always be very, they'll always have a particular place. And because the show will, you know. And like even now, you see, like there was just, she was dressed in a whole box. If you're watching this, you know, I was looking down at the window and you looked up and she, and she couldn't talk. So, I, so I, I just heard this, I'll see you on Sunday. I was like, yeah, see you on Sunday, lady in your TARDIS costume. I hope so much that she is seeing this right now. I hope that she finds it. She will. Someone will redo whatever those internet yeah. things are and she'll find out. You stay away from the internet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I'd, I'd stay away from sort of Googling myself as much as possible just because I wouldn't stop if I started. <laughs> and uh, my mum does it enough, to be honest. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, 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 I just don't know what good can come of it, really. Well, another quick fan question. I think I know the answer to this one. Is okay. is anyone that we've already seen on the show, could they be the new Doctor? Uh, I don't know, because I don't know who the new Doctor is. I, I, I mean, as far as I'm aware, they're sort of looking... Or they're beginning to look, and they've got quite a while until they need to decide. So I, I, I imagine it will be someone fresh, to be honest, but I really have no idea. Is there anybody you'd like to see or any sort of new direction you'd like them to go? Who would be? I don't know, really, because I sort of don't want to... I, I don't want to speculate too much. I sort of feel that's that's maybe not my place to, do you know what I mean? Because I might say, you know, because who, whoever it is will be the right actor or actress. Um, and, uh, you know... Let's wait and see who she is. <laughs> quite a contro- There's quite a controversy about that, actually. People really want to keep the character um, as is. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they're the stalwarts. You're, the, <laughs> she's a stalwart, this one. No, no. Do, what do you think? Do you think it, it would be wrong if it was a woman? Oh, gosh. You are about to get me in so much trouble. Come on. This, <laughs> now I'm turning it round. Welcome to IGN, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think it would be wrong if the Doctor was played by a woman? I don't, no. Oh, diplomatic response. Good. Well media trained. No, it's not. I'm going to get in so much trouble for saying that. It I think can be anyone. It can be anyone. And that's the great thing about the part. You know, if Helen Mirren did it or if, you know, uh, it's someone. I, you, you, there's so many female actresses who'd be amazing. And who knows? I think the most remarkable thing about the character is that it's about... Uh, it's more egalitarian. It's about the similarities between species and beings yeah, and sort of what unites. Because it's an alien. <laughs> He's an alien or she's an alien. And so it doesn't matter. You know, the, 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 you know, the doctor is a complete alien. It's why the notion of getting married and cooking scrambled eggs just makes him go, 
what the hell are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Go and sit, don't stand in front of a Dalek and tell him that he looks ridiculous. <laughs> At the same time, I will say, I, I, with all of this history, I do understand a devoted fandom. But, okay, so moving on to, speaking of devoted fandoms, <laughs> have you seen the Star Trek Doctor Who comic? No. The Star Trek Doctor Who comic? Wow, no, I haven't. Somebody wants to know if you'd like to play a Star Trek character. Yeah, I would. I would, JJ. Um, <laughs> uh, or, or Star Wars. Uh, so just put it out there. Um <laughs> Yeah, uh, but Ben, you know, Ben's, Ben's, Ben's kind of done the English villain now, hasn't he? So, I don't know. There's plenty of room for English villains. Yeah, and he was great in it. So it's, it's uh, yeah, but I love Star Trek and I love JJ's work. I think, you know, what that man can do with a steady cam is pretty special. The final question that we have from the fans is, will you ever wear a bow tie again? Yes, because bow ties, ladies and gentlemen, are cool. So cool. They are cool. <laughs> been such a delight thank you so much skin, lady. <laughs>